In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the front glass on the iPad 10th gen or the 2022 model, 10.2 I believe it's called. It looks like an iPad Air 4. It's got a button on the top there. You know what it is. Stick it on the hot plate. If you've not got a hot plate, use a hairdryer or a heat gun to achieve the same effect. This one's already been sat on here for the last 10 minutes or so, maybe half an hour. I've been busy. And I'm just going to pull off any of these loose shards of glass on the edge. And if I get lucky, which I might do, no. I, I always try and get the, get the little loose bits off the edge and see if I can get a pull on the adhesive that's underneath. And if you can, you can sort of pull it away. I think I've got a little bit there. See if we can pull it away from underneath the glass. And then that just makes it a little bit easier to remove it. So you see where I've got the little bit of adhesive? I'm just going to pull out as much as I can. It's not coming. Let's get on with it properly. To do this properly, you're going to find a spot where you can get in. This bit in the corner is nice. Get the plastic pick and lift it upwards like this, look. Lift it up and start running it along the edge. Once you've got a little bit, get your finger in there. And if you've got loose shards like that, you're going to use a razor blade just to peel it up a little bit. Get underneath it and you're just aiming to pull this away. The glass is already broken. You don't have to worry about damaging it anymore, but just go ahead and run that pick along this edge. If you are using a heat gun or hairdryer, it'll be a lot more difficult to get this to a temperature where it is easy like I'm doing here, but just keep running along the edge. And let me just make a point as well real quick. This opens from left to right, so it opens like that. You need to be starting on this left-hand edge working your way along the top and bottom edge. Don't worry about this side. You don't need to pry up on this side because it's going to open up and we, it's going to do it for us. You don't have to chop that up. So keep going round. I've just got these last bits to do. And I'm always just pulling it away, just gently, not too hard. Now spin it round and go for this bottom edge. And then that just shows how easy it is to open it up. You need to be careful not to touch this LCD. If you do get some fingerprints on it, I'll show you a little bit later on how to clean it up when we're cleaning up the iPad. But for now, try your absolute best not to get fingerprints on there because it can be a little pain to clean up. Let's move this over to the workbench. Now that we've got it opened up like this, we can pop a weighted object like a mug right behind the glass there. And that's just going to stop this from falling down and damaging anything whilst we're working on it. And now we're going to concentrate on removing the LCD from this one as well. The six star-shaped screws holding down the LCD on this side. Go ahead and remove those using a star screwdriver. I don't know the exact size on it. A T2, T2 screwdriver. So remove all six of those and store them safely for later. They won't stick to the magnetic screwdriver very well because there's magnets on the side of this iPad what's sort of interfering with it. But just go ahead and remove those and then lift them out with your tweezers. Store those screws safely for later. And then on the opposite side where all the cables are, we've got another four T2 screws just over here. Go ahead and remove those now. Same again, you're gonna to struggle to get them out because of all the magnets what's on there. But just loosen them off the best you can. And then use your tweezers to get them out of the way. Just be careful again not to touch the LCD when you're pulling these out with the tweezers. It's a bit like playing operation at this point. That should now allow the LCD to be lifted out of this iPad. I think the best way to lift this out is to get underneath it with the back of your tweezers just over here and start running it up the edge. I think there's a booby trap on some models of iPad. I don't know if it's a cellular version where there's another couple of screws down at the bottom of the LCD. So just be aware of that. But once you've lifted it up a little bit, this one opens up forwards, like just about all iPad models. This one's got real dusty inside there. That's gross. And now we need to, first of all, disconnect the battery to make sure that power is isolated from this. Then we're gonna disconnect these connectors here, here, and here, and tear down the rest of the iPad. To isolate power, Disconnect this screw here, then use a small piece of plastic cord to get in between the battery and the connector, providing insulation between the positive contacts on there, meaning that the iPad is now off. Press the button to make sure that it is actually off, because sometimes it doesn't catch right, and then we can begin 
disassembly to remove the screen. Just as a little note, whilst I'm doing this, I'm holding onto the LCD with my left hand here. It's a little bit awkward, but it's best not to rest this side of the LCD on anything in case it scratches it. So just be aware of that. Keep hold of it. You need to be a bit dexterous whilst doing this. Let's start from the bottom first so that we can get the LCD out of the way. So we'll remove this screw and this screw for the shield. I'll pull it out of the way with some tweezers, then use a plastic spudger to get underneath this LCD cable. It's stuck down a little bit there, and then we can pop it out and get this LCD out of the way. Store that somewhere. You're not gonna put, put your cup of tea on top of it and damage it, and then go ahead and disconnect this cable too. Remove the two screws holding down this shield. Use tweezers to lift it up and get it out of the way. Don't lose the screws because you're gonna need them again soon and then disconnect that cable just there. That's the front microphone and I think it's got a sensor attached to it too. And then the last two screws are just for this shield here. Remove those the same way you've done the others. Tweezers to get it out of the way and then the plastic stick to disconnect it. This now means that this screen or digitizer, or whatever you want to call it, can be removed. Just pull it up to release it. Don't throw this away just yet because we are going to need to transfer this microphone over. So put it to one side whilst we clean up the chassis. The easiest way to clean these chassis up is with one of these number 17 X-Acto blades. And we're just going to run it along the edge to help us clean it up. Just be careful when you get to the front camera area and that sensor up there that you don't end up chopping it off because that is 100% bad for business. Probably one of the most important jobs when you're doing an iPad repair is the preparation of the chassis because depending how clean you get it will make night and day difference on how well the iPad will stick or sorry, the, on how well the digitizer will stick to the chassis. So make sure that you really take your time at this point and make sure that it's very clean. Just another important safety note is that when using sharp objects around batteries, Make sure that you don't poke it with it because it will go pop. Nathan. Nathan. <clears throat> now that we've got the thick of the adhesive off, I'm going to get a clean room wipe and some isopropyl alcohol and just really rub that into the edge, making sure that this is really, really clean. I know a lot of people use a priming agent when sticking the iPad screens down. However, I know for a fact that if you're doing this job as a one-off, which I know a lot of you will be watching this and doing that, or if you don't do iPad repairs often enough, it's probably not worth your while to buy a tin. As long as you clean it up and make sure that it's very, very clean, you're not, you're not gonna need it, but it's just so important to make sure it's very clean. I don't know what all this gunge is on the, iPad, uh, on the battery, sorry. I'm just gonna squirt some alcohol on there and just wipe it up a little bit. I think it's just general child's mug. So that is our iPad prepared to receive the new digitizer, which leads us on to preparation of the old digitizer. Like I said before, we need to remove this microphone because I'm pretty sure that the new one doesn't have it on. It's also got a little sensor on there. I'm gonna use the 17 blade again, and I'm just gonna get underneath it to separate it. Just like that. So with that removed, we can pop it to one side, don't lose it. And I think that the new screen should have magnets attached. I'll just keep it close by in case it doesn't. The screen that I'm using is the Repair Pro Digitizer. These come direct from our friends at Replacebase. These are very, very good displays or digitizers. I don't think I've ever had one back with a touch fault. They come with the Tessa tape pre-applied, which is absolutely brilliant. And as we predicted, it has the magnets already attached. Honestly, these are just very, very good screens. I'll leave a link for this in the description below. I think they come to about something around 20 pounds or so, and they're worth every penny of that. If they're a bit more, it doesn't really matter because they're just so good. So now that I've finished noshing off that digitizer, we're gonna start by popping the microphone onto here. But as you can see, the digi's got the plastic bit already attached to it which means we need to separate the microphone and sensor from the plastic that we took away. That's easily done with our blade and a little drop of alcohol. And then we can go straight in on there 
and I think the adhesive came off with that. So to secure it down, I'm just gonna add a little bit of UV glue. I know everybody's gonna ask me in the comments, where do I buy the UV glue? I'm gonna answer that question in another video coming very soon. It's gonna be part two of installing iPad home buttons. It's probably got the most questions on that and I'm awful because I never answer any of the questions in the comments. I do apologize. I'll try better next time. But look, that's stuck down really easy, really quick with the UV glue. I didn't speed that up either, by the way. So, like I said, there's already tester tape pre-applied. You don't need any B7000, T7000, any knockoff weird Chinese glues. You just don't need them because it's very, very easy to use this. So, let's go ahead and line up the top digitizer cable bottom digitizer cable i'll pop the mug back behind the screen there and then i can secure the microphone cable and sensor cable and then we're just going to very very simply get those shields back on and secure the two screws on each one that holds it down except the bottom one because we need to put the lcd on but let's go for this one screw 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 and screw 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 they'll only fit one way as well by the way i don't know if we caught the other one going in both of these it's got like a sharp end, which has got where the cable goes. It's fairly obvious, just pay attention. That's the way to go. As for this bottom one, we're gonna get our LCD now. Don't worry if it is a little bit dirty, I'm gonna show you how to clean it up in a minute. But just to offer up the cable, it might, my hands might be in the way while for, of the video. I apologize if they are. Push it down and then I'm holding it up with the, my left hand again. Same again, it only goes one way, but if you put it on the wrong way, it's gonna cause some problems. It goes like that, look. The opening for the LCD there, and then opening for the digitizer cable there. Only goes one way, trust me. If you do it wrong, it's because you're not paying attention. Put these two screws in, and then the other one, my hand's gonna be in the way, but you need to get that other screw in. So with that, we can just take out our battery isolator. I dare say these even come with like an isolating pick. There's definitely one brand of uh, digitizer what comes with them. It might be the Repair Pro, it might be the IP9, I can't remember. Anyway, re-secure the battery. Don't forget to do this. Whenever I do this, I also just push down on it a little bit. That's because when you put that battery isolating pick in there, it can sometimes bend this just a little bit. So just push it back down in case it's bent at a touch. And then we can, of course, lay down our LCD. So now we're gonna go ahead with those four black screws and I'm just going to be very, very, very careful in putting them in with my tweezers. I'm going to line them all in first, and then we can just go through with the screwdriver and sort it all out. Don't worry too much about touching this side because there's a film on the inside, so you don't need to worry about touching that. But obviously, just be careful not to touch or scratch your LCD because we are working very close to it in a fairly tight little space. And you might find that it does that. The screws will jump out and stick to the magnets just these last two screws now so now we've just got those six smaller t2 screws to get in there and i'm going to do the same again lining them up with the tweezers because the magnets on these will throw it around these are actually really really awkward to get in there um, just because those magnets keep pulling on the screws and pulling them out of line and you might get frustrated at this but just stick with it take your time and don't scratch that lcd the last one now before the victory mile so with all those secured it's always a good idea to make sure that the ipad turns on and that there's not any touch problems and everything works as it should i'm not going to go through testing for the sake of the video but once you've tested it and you're happy with the repair, you're gonna take a clean room wipe and you're just gonna make sure that the iPad is dust free and it's working and there's no problems with it. But once you're done with testing it, you're just gonna get a clean room wipe, make sure it's a clean one, and then you can clean it up, make sure that it's nice and dust free. It's easiest if you do it on the black screen because any little white bits of dust will show up much better. If you find that you've got some smears or some fingerprints on there, the best thing to clean this up with is acetone. The easiest way to stick these down is to peel off 
three edges of the adhesive. So that's the bottom left hand edge and top edge. And then peel off the back sheet. Don't forget to do this. Give it one final wipe to make sure that it's 100% dust free. If you've got a clean room, then it's gonna really help you. Fold down the screen like that. And then peel out the adhesive. And then close it up. Make sure there's no razor blades stuck to the magnets. This is what I'm seeing, so many magnets in this. And then just push it down all the way around. That's all you need to do. You don't need clamps, you don't need elastic bands, you don't need to secure it in any way. Just run your fingers around it, give it a nice squeeze, and that's secure. That's the good thing about using the tesser tape, because this repair is now complete. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.